Hello, my name is David Galen, product manager of the Coleman Mock and Max Air brands, both Air Excel companies. Today, we're going to show you how to properly install an electric heat element. The benefits of installing this electric heat element into your Coleman Mock rooftop air conditioner is that it installs out of sight. And when plugged into shore power, this will provide you with 5,600 BTUs of heat. The benefit of this is that it allows you to use less of your propane, which is a limited resource within your RV. Now, let's jump into the installation. Now that we're in the RV, we're ready to start the installation of the Coleman Mach electric heat strip. Uh, to start, Coleman Mach recommends that a licensed qualified technician perform this installation. Now the tools that we're going to use today for the installation will include our safety equipment, glasses and gloves. I've got a cordless drill with a Phillips bit or I may need a Torx bit depending on the OEM and a 3 16 Allen wrench. Included in our package we provide heat element assembly, installation instructions, and a replacement selector switch knob. So our first step for this is to make sure that our selector switch knob is in the off position and then we'll turn the 115 volt breaker off. We're ready to uh, take this apart. Uh, to note, we're specifically doing this installation on a 48000 series rooftop unit and a manual control duct and ceiling assembly. Uh, the heat strip element that we have uh, fits a 48000 and 45000 series air conditioner. Uh, we also have a heat element package which is a separate for a 47000 series unit. Uh, difference is the mounting bracket, which you'll have to do some assembly of that on a 4000 series unit. So first thing we're going to do well, now that we have the power off is remove our selector switch knob and our thermostat knob by pulling those down. We'll want to save those for later. Uh, I'm going to press in on my grill, remove it, slide a filter out and set aside. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Again, gently pushing in, pulling that down, sliding the filter out. At this point, we're ready to remove our outer shroud. And to do that, we'll use our cordless drill to remove the screws in the four corners. And when I go to take out this last screw, I do need to support this with one hand as it will want to drop when I remove this screw. We'll pull down the outer shroud and set it off to the side. Now we're ready to remove the uh, inner shroud, removing these four screws. We're also going to remove our air chute assembly by removing the three inner screws on the inside. So to start this, first we'll take out the screws on the inside here, saving our screws for later. Now we're ready to remove our inner chute screws. And so again, when I go to remove the last screw, I need to support this inner sheet assembly as it will want to fall down. And we'll let that come down and rest the nine pin from the rooftop unit and the high voltage Romex wire will support this assembly. At this point, now we're ready to start our heater installation. So with our air chute assembly down, the first thing I'm going to do is remove this black safety cap over the two pin plug. This is eventually where we're going to plug the heat element assembly into. Now for installation, uh, we've identified here on our upper unit uh, to install optional electric heat or air purifier at this location. So our heat element is going to come over here and fit right up over this flange. 
So it's important to note that you can either have a heat strip or a air purifier, but you cannot use both at the same time as they install in the same location. Uh, so let me get my gloves on here now that we're up in the uh, rooftop unit working around the metal flanges. Um, first thing we do is when we provide this heat element, the set screws actually set down to that bottom position. We need to back that out so we're able to slide up over that flange and down. So I'm gonna take this heat strip, I'm gonna push it up into the opening at an angle, come back across, and then we're going to set our heat element flange down over, and then we're gonna work to center that in the opening. So important to note that once we have this up in here, uh, we need to make sure that we are very mindful of the routing of any of the wiring, including the nine pin cable. Um, we need to keep that away from the sheath of the heat element as it gets very warm. On a ducted wall control system that would have a control box up in here versus a manual control, there'll be a lot more low voltage wires. Um, we need to be mindful of those as well to route them down away from the sheath of the heat element, as well as tie those such that we're not blocking airflow into the return of the opening. So uh, those are all very important items. I'll go ahead and use my uh, 3 16 to tighten the heat element up. And we wanna tighten that such that we take away any movement in that heat element so that it cannot come loose and fall. So we're gonna tighten this down until this heat element is secure in place here. Uh, we talked about a 3 16 Allen wrench. I've got a ratcheting tool that speeds this process up a lot faster. So once we've got that installed, now we're ready to plug our two pin harness from our heat element into the two pin connector uh, that we remove the black plug from. Again, we need to line up as there's a certain way that this pin goes in, so we need to find that push in until it clips. All right, so now that we have the heat element installed, we're going to reinstall our inner half of our chute assembly. So we'll twist that around. We've got to be careful not to pinch any of the wires as we're pushing this back up in and then we'll find the mounting locations on the mount frame and screw this back into place. Once we have one screw started, we're pretty much hands-free, at least at this point, for a while. We'll twist this around to line the hole up again. And finish by shooting these last two screws. Now that we have the inner chute secured, we need to reattach our duct chute assembly here using the three screws again. And so now that we've put that chute back up, I think you'll notice over here that our nine pin wire is pushed back up inside up towards that heat element. So I'm gonna need to reach up and I'm gonna pull this wire harness down uh, such that that wire is not pushed up and it cannot touch that heat element sheet. So this may require you to put a wire tie here to secure these wires so that they cannot touch that heat element. Very important uh, to make sure no wires can touch that heat element sheet. Uh, at this point, we're ready to grab the outer shroud. Again, using the screws that we started with here. We will make sure to line up 
bottom of the shroud so that our selector switch and thermostat slide through there. And then the four holes on the outer grill, the shroud will line up with holes on the mount frame. Once we get one screw in, we're pretty much hands-free and we can put the other three in. Now that those are back in place, we can grab our filters and grills. Slide that in. We'll start on the grill towards the bottom with the two and then bend our grill so that we snap in in those three locations and repeat the same thing on the other side. So now we're ready to install the knobs. Uh, in the package, we provided uh, two different knobs for us. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna reuse our thermostat knob. We've gotta line up the D slot on the knob. The metal stem up here is actually our thermostat. So on the original knob, you probably noticed that you had off, low fan, and low fan. So what we've done is provide a new knob to replace that. The newer style ceiling assemblies and an older style ceiling assembly knob. But on this knob, we have off, low heat, and low fan. So we've replaced the fan settings on there with a low heat setting. So your ceiling assembly comes heat ready. So all we have to do is replace the knob and plug in that heat strip and we're ready to go. So that completes that installation. We're ready now to turn our 115 volt AC breaker back on. And once we get back in here, we can turn on the selector switch to, to low heat and turn the thermostat up to call for heat. And if it's cool enough in here, you're ready to enjoy the electric heat strip. On the installation we just completed, you're now ready to turn the AC circuit breaker back on and turn your thermostat on to start enjoying the benefits of the electric heat strip. We specifically showed you today how to install a heat strip into a 48000 series air conditioner. We have two heat strips available, one that fits a 48000 and 45000 series unit and a heat strip that fits the 47000 series unit. The benefits of using this heat strip are that it does install out of sight in the rooftop air conditioner. It also, when plugged into shore power, provides you with 5,600 BTUs of heat. This allows you to not use up that limited resource of propane that you have within that RV and still allow you to heat that RV. Coleman Mach recommends that a qualified licensed technician install this product. This product and a variety of other Coleman Mach climate control accessories can be found at a local dealer or retailer near you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for using our trusted products and good luck on your next adventure.